What's going on guys? I'm Tyler, and to continue my series of 2021 TIFF reviews, I'm here to let you know that Petite Maman is no perfect movie. And Petite Maman is about a young girl named Nellie who's recently lost her grandmother, and she doesn't know how to feel about that, especially seeing how her mother is so grief-stricken that one day she abruptly leaves without it being certain whether or not she'd come home. So one day, while exploring the nearby woods at her grandma's old house, she comes across a girl her age named Marion, building a tree fort made of miscellaneous trees and branches, and from then on they form a very odd but still genuine friendship that helps them overcome the family dilemmas they're both experiencing. And Petite Maman comes to us from the director of Portrait of a Lady on Fire, Celine Siama, which is more than enough of a reason to check this film out. I was hoping that because of her reputation that this would get a theatrical run at the festival, but no such luck there, which is a damn shame, because while this doesn't have anywhere near the same amount of emotional impact or large-scale scope, I can't imagine why anyone would walk into this movie expecting that. As its own work of art, it's still a sweet, charming, and heartfelt coming-of-age film that had me smiling throughout the majority of the 72-minute runtime, which... That had my curiosity, seeing as how there are old-school Disney movies that run just a few minutes longer than this one. But for anyone worried about the length, in my opinion, 72 minutes was the right amount. If it was even stretched to 90, it could have definitely improved upon some of the side characters in Nellie and Marion's life, and it definitely would have made the resolution, without spoiling anything, a little more crystal clear. But at the same time, if it were to explain the scenarios and the metaphors a lot more than it actually did, it would have lost a ton of its impact. Exploring the side characters, I felt, would have been unnecessary, and it would have dragged the movie on. But in any case, Celine Sciamma's directing techniques sound so simple on paper, but are actually meticulous and time-consuming to pull off. She filmed so many of her scenes in what's referred to as a Spielberg wonder, where a long take is broken down into multiple shots and making it appear as if they had been cut together through the movement of the camera and the staging of the actors. So, for example, one scene can start off with this elderly woman sitting in a living room on a couch, and then all of a sudden, Nellie will enter the frame, but the camera is filming her in a close-up behind her back, making it ambiguous as to what Nellie thinks of this elderly woman. But then, stage three, to finish it off, has her walking towards the couch and sitting down next to the woman, to emphasize the growing bond between the two of them. Hell, Siyama can actually accomplish so much in one still shot without, without ever adding that much to it. My favorite shot in the entire movie is Nellie's mom driving the two of them to their grandma's house where they're going to be staying, and Nellie's hand hilariously enters and exits the frame to feed her, offer her a drink, and even hug her as they're driving, and it was just... It was such a touching moment. It's a prime example of how visuals can move, can move a story forward as opposed to dialogue or music or anything else. And it's so, it's so amazing to see a director who relies so much on atmosphere as opposed to exposition or even music. Because much like Portrait of a Lady on Fire, there's barely any songs throughout the entire film. Just one example, seeing Nellie and Marion walk through this nearby woods filled in massive, beautiful wide shots that capture the... that capture just the beauty of nature, but also the amount of empty space within the frame illustrates the amount of loneliness they're both experiencing in their lives. And listening to their, to their footsteps crunching on leaves, branches, acorns, makes you feel as if you're in the setting with them the entire time. And the performances are pretty decent too. I was a little worried going in to see how Siyama would direct young children, and it might test some people's patience when they see that the two child actors who are the stars of the film, their expressions are a lot more muted, and their dialogue makes them come across as more mature than you would expect for eight-year-olds, but at the same time, once you start to unravel what's really going on within the story, and you understand what's ex what these kids are experiencing, it does start to make a hell of a lot more sense. The girl playing Nellie in particular was impressive, seeing as how her arc is about trying to understand what her grandmother's death means to her, you would assume that she's the girl in need of guidance, but then she meets Marion, and while it wouldn't appear to do so, as she spends more time with her, 
She realizes that Marion is living under tougher circumstances than her, and that realization is what encourages her to step up and do anything that she can, no matter what happens to help her friend, was so... It was so touching. It was so heartfelt. And with, um... And with Marion, she's the typical... She's the typical friend who's the more dominant member of the relationship, but as time goes by, you realize that it's more of a defense mechanism and an opportunity for her to finally take charge of something in her life. And as the two of them spend more time together, she becomes more worried about what the future will have in store for both of them, whether or not they'll remain friends by the end of the movie. And since she's technically the de facto leader of the group, she has a lot more responsibility that falls on her shoulders. And, you know, listening to this, listening to this description of the plot, there are so many other relationships like these that we've seen in other coming-of-age films. It was reminiscent of Will Wheaton and River Phoenix and Stand By Me. Uh, Marnie was there. Luca this year had a very similar duo dynamic. And as per usual, I could tie this into Lena and Webby's friendship from DuckTales. But in all honesty, this is one of my favorite formulas, seeing two friends meet for the first time, and since they have a limited amount of time to be friends, they take every opportunity they can to create memories that will last forever. And even though one friend is always going to be more dominant than the other, these movies, these relationships show that friendships work at their best when the two of them help each other out in a 50-50 sense. And the fact that they each have one person to depend on no matter what the circumstances are, it's a completely inspirational plot device that's told in a decent amount of respect, intelligence, and also has its crowd-pleasing moments. And much like port my Portrait of a Lady on Fire review, I rewatched it just to see if I noticed the same techniques and same emotional impact that I got with Portrait, because it had been a year. I think it was one of the last movies I saw before the first lockdown, and I remember not really having that much to say, both positive and negative. And it's the same thing here. Celine Siama has immaculate direction. She gives great performances from her two main leads. She has some clever foreshadowing in regards to the resolution of the film, because without spoiling anything, this plays out more like an ambiguous mystery in the vein of David Lynch, where all of these strange, surreal events are happening, but it still feels realistic, authentic, and the actors don't react out of the ordinary because, well, if I told you because, it wouldn't be all that interesting, would it? But I do like that it plays out more as a mystery while combining the familiar elements of a coming-of-age drama. And even though the elements and the messages are familiar, they're still well thought out, they're intelligent, and they're incredibly heartwarming. This is a close second to The Starling in regards to the festival movies I saw this year. And for all that reasons, all for all those reasons... I'm going to give Petite Maman a 4.5 out of 5. Definitely check it out online or in person whenever you get the chance. I would have liked to have seen something other than on my laptop, but um, you know what? It was more than worth it. In any case, guys, thanks as always for watching. If you have seen Petite Maman, let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. Be sure to stay tuned for more TIFF reviews, and be sure to like and subscribe. Take care.